and an important point, up to 80% of women by the age of 60 will have contracted this virus, HPV. But dealing with an STD such as HPV is still often hard to do. Even though it is so common, some people still have trouble with the social stigma that comes with it. Not to mention, you have to break the news to a prospective new partner. This is exactly what happened to our next guest, Adina. When I was 20 years old, I received a phone call from an ex-boyfriend. He said that he had just been diagnosed with genital warts. I felt sick to my stomach because all I could see was that high school sex ed slide of this horribly wart-covered genitalia. The doctor came in and he said that the results had shown that I did have HPV. I was really upset. I started shouting and crying. I was angry and I was sad because I felt like I was truly damaged good. What does this mean for my future? Have I lost the right to find true love and have a baby? I felt that if I could survive this and get through it, it was my duty to do something to help other women like me. I actually learned that Adina had HPV on our very first date. Before I started dating him, I wanted to know if the HPV was still in my body. So I requested a follow-up colposcopy. They found no traces of HPV-infected cells. I am willing to put my own reputation on the line by saying, yes, I was diagnosed with cervical HPV. And it doesn't mean that I'm irresponsible, and it doesn't mean that I'm uneducated, and it doesn't mean that I'm not a successful, good person. There is life after HPV. And Lisa, Dina's story is so common because HPV is common. It's very common, especially since it doesn't have symptoms, and we don't really know how it works. It can come and it can go, so that's why you want to be retested. But, but still, there's that social stigma that I caught an STD. But again, when half of men and half of women who are sexually active have this virus, it's an STD. But if, if everyone on the street, one of two has it, there shouldn't be the social stigma, but there still is with a lot of women. Right. I have women, when I tell them the diagnosis, just devastated. They're crying on the phone, and I try and tell them, really, this is, this is something that, you know, we can handle. But I have to explain to them that you could have gotten this with your very first partner. Um, this does it. You could have used condoms, because condoms, as great as they are for STDs, aren't 100%. Nothing's 100%. So this really should have no reflection on the individual. It's just something that happened, and it's great that we actually have parameters to deal with it. But it sounds like your own immune system can actually right. rid, rid your body of it at some point. If, if she retested works. herself and there was no evidence of. But a lot <coughs> of, of women virus. will think people think that their, um, their you know, morals aren't good or that they have lots of right. partners or things like that. And that's not the case. You and can get that why, from your first partner. And that's partner. why Adina is so passionate is. about it because thank you, Adina and Jose, for being here. <laughs> you know, first of all, Jose, when you found out you were really supportive, you did some research and you realized that, okay. So you have HPV. That doesn't make you a bad person. A lot of people do, and I still care about you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we first uh, we first started going out on our very first date, um, usually uh, two people who are you know uh, professors when they when they go on a first date, they ask each other about their research. And I found out on that first date that she had a uh, human papilloma virus, and I was a little bit concerned because I'd never heard of it. It's not something that you know. Guys talk about when they're, you know, having beers with each other, and so I, I was a little worried. Well, what effect is it going to have on me? I, you know, I, this person's—I'm very interested in this person. Maybe somewhere down the line, you know, uh, uh, there may be we might get intimate. Uh, what, what, effect, what impact is it going to have on me? So the first date really did turn into a, um, uh, a sexual health seminar slash date, and, and I learned a whole lot about, you know, HPV, human papilloma virus. Um, and I, I, yeah, like like you say, I, 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 you know, I found out that yeah, this is something that you know anyone can get. Um, it's something that's very treatable. It's something that that you know isn't really isn't really a long-term issue. And Adina, you, you're passionate about this, and even wrote a book called Damaged Goods to help women to help empower them if they are having a, an incurable sexually transmitted disease. Hey, that's not a reflection on you. A lot of women have it. But it doesn't make 
you any lesser of a person. Oh, definitely. I mean, when I was diagnosed at the age of 20, I, I really thought my life was over in many ways. And there was no show like this to put this issue out there. There were no support groups. And there was definitely no book to let me know that other women had had a similar diagnosis and had gone on to get good medical treatment and find a partner who would be understanding and educate themselves. And then ultimately, as we did, to, to go on and have a baby. And that's what I wanted to know. So the research in the book is all about trying to get rid of STD stigma, put the facts out there, and really tell women that there's great life after being diagnosed with HPV or herpes. And that's the women I interviewed. Their stories are in the book. Well, oh, thank great. you both yeah. for sharing your story with us.